know what this means. It must be deer season. Let's get after it. Hey folks, we're in a little different location as you can see and I don't know where the chuck wagon is this week. But uh, we're in South Dakota and people have been after me for a long time on YouTube. Uh, what about some venison? What about some elk? Well, we did run into some venison. And uh, Ted, I want to thank you so much, my friend, for uh, getting us some camp meat here today sure. so we could cook up some deer. But uh, tell them who you are, my friend. Where are you from? I'm Ted Meyer. I'm from northeast Nebraska, a little town called Ewing. 10 miles north of Knoxville. Okay. Well, well, 30, 35 from Phillip, yep. 35 miles from Phillip. JNF Outfitters. Yes, there's, this is just like a piece of beef or a hog or anything else. All the same cuts are there, even though this may be a mule deer, this is all just the same. And so, what 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 we get out of here, Ted? The tenderloins. Yeah. I'm, that is probably the premier cut. It is a, by far the best, yeah. in my And opinion. it's located always right under the backbone. Right mm -hmm. towards the back and so many people overlook it you know and they don't know where it's at but if you're eat, used to eating a fillet or something like that that's where it's coming from to cut some chops out also yeah. of the back strap yeah and you can see they're probably what inch and a half yep. inch and a quarter thick and uh, the biggest mistake people make when they cook deer meat especially if you're going to sear it or something like that is overcook it and uh, i always like to let deer soak in a little water solution or something for a little while till you know they're good and clean and then we'll dry them out good and the best thing you can do with them is put them in a piece of cast iron. Come on in here Nathan and Sheldon. I'd like for folks to know how good a people y'all are. Now, now folks, me and Shan got the pleasure of feeding these two little tiny fellers last year and they eat us out of house and home. How long y'all been hunting deer? Since I was, I was, 12. I was about 12 years old. We was always trained when we was little. I don't say trained, we was taught um, one shot. Let's one shot. kill this deer, let's get him on the ground quick as you can. The most important thing to make deer taste good is what, my friend? Well, the preparation of it is the main thing. Cool out, you can gut the deer and hang it up and cool it off, but if it's gonna be getting warm out, it's really important to to either get the hide off and get it cooled down or just to get it um, deboned and, and cut up before the meat gets hot because you let it hang too long or very long, it's just going to ruin the meat. Um, I know a lot of guys make that mistake with antelope. They say antelope's no good, but they shoot it while it's hot and they haul it around and pick it up for a couple days and or a day and then they wonder why it doesn't taste any good. But We let him hang what, for what, four days? Yep. And, uh, so it's got some good cooling on it. That's what you need to let meat cure. Do y'all like cool hide on, hide off? Typically do hide on. Okay. In, in our country, it's a little warmer where we hunt, so we try to hang one, or I've took a lot of times just a half or quarter and then just put them in a Yeti ice chest and just soak them with ice for like seven, eight days, and that old meat will turn nearly solid white, and uh, it's always more tender. But if you've got a place where you can hang one and you can keep him cold, hey, he needs to age just like a beef. You're like me, Ted, and you know, you leave that old silver membrane on a piece of meat or anything like that, or, and I never was a, a really a fan of deer fat. Mm -hmm. You know, I it, agree. it doesn't, doesn't make meat taste mm -hmm. any better. It's not like a pork fat or a beef fat. And you need to take that old silver lining off or all the membrane you can off a piece of meat that's deer to where you ain't living them just pure old meat. And uh, that's better done too, I think, when it's colder. You know, when that meat is good and cold, it'll peel off a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, Ted, you harvested this animal. Yes. I think you should be the first one to have a bite of him after we get him cooked, don't you? Okay, I agree. I yep. agree, too. So we'll get him in there in the kitchen in a minute, and we'll finish this deal up, and so stick around. Quiet on the set. Where's the director at? Cut! Cut! There we go. Here, I got this old saucepan to go in. Put us in some beef broth, some celery salt, some green onion chopped really fine, and then some just an old yellow onion, about a half one. Put it in here, a little garlic. We're gonna let this come to where you can see it simmer really good. Then we're gonna pour in this red wine. These little loin chops here, ribeyes out of this deer. Season them real with black pepper and salt all the way around. We preheated this oven to about 350 degrees. We got that cast iron skillet in there. 
And we're going to leave it about 20 minutes and let it get really good and hot because we want to sear this stuff. That's what it's about, getting that perfect sear. This beef broth and them onions and garlic and stuff have started to simmer really well. So we're going to add red wine and we'll let it cook down for a little bit. The reason I like to use red wine with a venison is because of Shannon. When I first started cooking her deer meat, she said it tasted a little gamey. And some folks think that. Now this being mule deer to me eats totally different than whitetail because a whitetail is considered a browser, a mule deer is a grazer. He's more like cattle, he's more eating grass, more stuff like cattle eat. Wine and the reducing because you have the acid in there from the wine is going to help break down the meat too but it's going to give it a totally different flavor and it is going to be oh so good. Butter, the most magic ingredient of all. We will cook this down to where it's melted pretty good, stir in some flour to thicken it because it's what's going to thicken our broth that we got started with this wine when we get them steaks near done. Now you'll be careful not to burn this butter so we got it on a pretty low heat. We're going to add about two tablespoons of flour which is about that much. We just want to thicken this. Be careful you don't burn the butter and make sure you get them lumps out of that flour. This is what's going to become the roux to put in there to that red wine sauce to thicken it up. This wine and these onions and this beef broth have been simmering for about two minutes. So we're going to add this to it. We're going to simmer that around, let her go for about another two or three minutes, and then we're just going to let it sit. If Shan will zoom in here a little, you can see this is starting to thicken up just a tad. Total simmer time, probably about five minutes time we get the beef broth in there first. Get the butter melted down with the flour in it. Put it back in here. We're going to let it start to go just till it starts to thicken just a tad. Just going to set this aside. Leave it till we get ready for it right at the last. That old skillet aren't to be hot now. So we're going to pull it out of there. Make sure you got something to grab a hold of that handle because it is going to be warm. Had it warm or hot, but we're going to keep it hot. That is due to we're going to put it on high heat about two tablespoons of oil and I'm going to give it time to warm up just a tad. Three, four. Them are about an inch and a half thick. Normally cut them about like this if you're using the tenderloin. You don't even have to use the bone in. Just cut the back strap out then you can just slice them in maybe inch steaks like that. Let them go about a minute and a half to two minutes on each side being that thin but seeing as these are about an inch and a half we're going to go about two minutes on each side, then we'll turn them, let them cook another two minutes, then we'll pour this sauce over them, let them simmer for just a little bit. Whew, it'll be good. You'll be wanting to go deer hunting tomorrow. As you can see, we're beginning to get a pretty good sear. This is beginning to come up that edge just a little, so we're going to flip them little rascals. And let them go about two more minutes on that side. The worst thing you can do to a deer steak is overcook it. it. Needs to be on the air of medium rare towards rare. If you got that bone in ribeye before we get through, if you're going to do that, we need to cook this other side just a tad too. So remember, you need to stand them up a little if you're going to leave that bone in there. Since we've been about two minutes on one side, two minutes on the other. We have tried to brown them edges just a tad. Come time to add the magic sauce. I like to try to pour it directly over them. And we're going to let this simmer in there and let that reduce down for a little bit. It will be good. One other thing I'm going to tell you too, if you're doing this in a cast iron skillet, acid is really hard on iron. But as long as you keep your iron seasoned well and used and cleaned well, you won't have no trouble. Now I like to come back and get a little of that onion and all that goodness back up there on top of them. We're going to let them cook about three minutes probably total. We used a red wine today, and you can use any kind you want, but I prefer a good red wine that is pretty dark, like a Merlot or a Cabernet. That's going to give it the Cabernet. That's a fancy word for me to say, Shan. Cabernet, like the Cabernet dancers. Cabaret. I was like, I don't even get that. <laughs> I, did. I, I knew somebody got it, Shan. Been about two, three minutes. Things are good. We're going to, what they say in my country, stick a fork in it, it's done. 
That dog will hunt, I promise you. And we'll get them wonderful big game hunters back in here, let them have a sample. Using the fine china today? Fine china, yes. See this? It's like my Vanna White deal. Make sure you get some of that good broth back up on there. Well, fellers, y'all done the hard part. I just done the easy part. Now you get to either reap the benefits or shoot the cook. One of the two, know what I mean? We need your honest opinions. Mm. It'll make a chubby guy happy. <laughs> <laughs> Is it about rare? Medium Perfect. rare? Mm -hmm. I would say this is top of the line. Whoa. And Ted, he, would, he wouldn't just say that just for TV's sake, Shannon, no. Then I'll take that pan and drink the sauce. He'll drink the sauce. Hey, it makes pretty good gravy. But I want to thank J&F for uh, having us up here. It's been a blast. And uh, Ted, thank you so much, my friend, for uh, getting us something to eat for lunch. Beautiful country we're in, Ted. And tell the folks again where we're at. We're just here about 10 miles, uh, 35 miles north of Phillip on the edge of the beautiful Cheyenne River Breaks. We just like being up here. There's lots of deer to, to see. The main thing is the beautiful country we get to see and the camaraderie we get while we're up here. Thank you so much for stopping by. We don't ever take it for granted that you take time to watch our videos. Be sure and hit the little subscribe button up there. We would appreciate it. God bless you, and I hope you have a great day. Yes, uh, Nathan, get a little over that way just so you can block some of the light. There you go. There you go. Now that's yeah, cute. <laughs>